Here's a demonstration of circular motion using a steel marble inside a cup. I can swirl the marble into circles and it's the walls of the cup that really hold the marble into a circular path. We can say that the walls of the cup are providing a centripetal force, a special kind of force that holds an object into circular motion. Now, how do I know that the walls of the cup are really holding the marble into that circular motion? Well, if I turn the marble in the cup, uh, in an upside down cup and I swirl it, then if I lift up the cup and I remove that force, then the marble moves outwards. And it moves outwards specifically in a straight line path. And that's because Newton's first law says that in the absence of a net force, an object moves in a straight line at constant speed. Now, what if I swirl the marble inside the cup, but instead of removing the cup, I remove my hand? Well, as the marble swirls, and as the marble wants to move into a straight line, the cup is gonna get in the way. So, the cup will move with the marble. And this is an example of Newton's third law, right? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So as the marble wants to move in a straight line, the cup is pushed in that same straight line path. Now, compared to where the cup was, we can say that the cup moves outwards from where it was. So the cup is experiencing an outward push from the marble's inertia while the cup is applying an inward push on the marble, right? The walls of the cup are forcing the cup to turn, not allowing, excuse me, the walls of the cup are forcing the marble to turn, not allowing the marble to go in that straight line path. So the, the walls of the cup are specifically providing a normal force, and that normal force is directed inwards towards the center of the cup on all sides. That inward force is called a centripetal force, and that's what pushes the marble out of its straight line path into a curve and eventually making a circle.